Well, some very big questions are being asked at the moment in the science world in the wake of the revelation that Eda, remember the 47-year-old fossil revealed in May, is perhaps not the great scientific find it was made out to be. Eda was supposedly a missing link in our evolution. She had been excavated in Germany and had sat in a drawer for more than two decades before being purchased and packaged up for public consumption. Well, Robin Williams is the presenter of Radio National Science Show and he joins us again. Robin, thanks for being with us. Thank you. Robin, the missing link that isn't. Tell us about Eda and Norway's self-styled Indiana Jones, who was behind it all. Well, wasn't it a huge fuss? I was getting press releases about the greatest revelation in science forever, and they didn't say published in the journal, whatever it is, but said, you'll see the film, you'll see the book, and then the revelation came out, and indeed in May we did see a film on television presented by David Attenborough, and there was a book by a friend of mine called Colin Tudge, it's got a tremendous reputation. It was a blockbuster, either, a 47 million year old blockbuster. Yeah. And that is not the way you publish science. The way you publish science is you put it in the journals, people look at it, worry about it, fiddle around, and uh, then after, after some time they assent, yes, it's a big deal. So the very way it was presented was somewhat shocking. And, of course, now published in the journal Nature today, they're suggesting it's not, in fact, a missing link, but it might be a side branch, so it doesn't connect us with the primates, it's something of interest, certainly, but what the team has done in Stony Brook is look at 360 different morphological features, as they say, different parts of the bodies in 117 living and extinct primates, and they say, no, it's not linked to us, it's a side branch. Apes, monkeys and us all belong to one particular group of mammals, the primates, and the common feature we all share is four fingers and an opposable thumb, a characteristic we share with this 47 million year old fossil. Could we be related? Robin, that seems a pretty obvious thing to be able to sort out. If you're looking at the, the bones that are there and saying, well, actually, they're not in that in that lineage, they're related to the lemur or whatever it is. Uh, lemur, how do you say that? Lemur, lemur. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, how could the original team get it so wrong? As you say, people of the stature of um, David Attenborough? Sure. Well, especially if it's been around for 20 years in a drawer. You know, this Fair bit was, of time to examine This it. came through the market. Now, it's a fantastic site in Germany. They've found any number of fossils. But people like Colin Groves from the Australian National University at the time did say that he found it extremely suspicious and unlikely to be such a big deal. In fact, why all the fuss about a missing link? Who cares quite so much about the fact it might be way back 47 million years? You know, it's not as if... It was eight or nine million years, which is the kind of connection that we expect with us and the apes, way back. But uh, there's no question, it is a good fossil, it is interesting, but it's not the kind of fuss that really would have been justified given how they launched it and spun it. And maybe not worth the million dollars that the uh, paleontologist Jorn Huron paid for it, though he probably got that back through the film and the book. <laughs> Without question. Now, this is going to be brought up at a conference in uh, Melbourne in December where filmmakers worry about the fact that sometimes you get deals, and this is done many times, where people like us, you know, science journalists, will go along and say, can we actually follow this up properly? But, oh no, we've done a deal with the filmmakers. Well, and will this damage the reputation of people like Attenborough? Uh, well, David, I think, was enthusiastic and without question, it's an interesting fossil. It doesn't stop being interesting, but uh, the hype is a worry and I think David will be slightly cross about this. Okay. And a breakthrough on the killer disease afflicting the world's frog and toad populations and this comes from James Cook Uni. It certainly does with a little help from the University of Sydney. Now, this is, is really been worrying us for a long time. You've had frog populations dying out around the world and the mystery is what was the culprit and eventually people came up with the idea that it was a chytrid fungus. And the story here is quite remarkable because around the world something called the African clawed frog was used for pregnancy tests. You take, you know, to take the frog some urine from a woman who you think is pregnant, inject the urine into the frog, which would immediately react to the hormone from the woman's urine and lay eggs. Now, that was used around You're the kidding. world. kidding, that was uh, a pregnancy uh, no, no, this is absolutely straight. And so they were carting these clawed frogs around the world 
and this bloody thing had chytrid fungus on it. It was immune, but in many ways that is thought to have been the cause for this fungus going everywhere. Now, the team in James Cook University are perfectly clear that they've done any number of tests and found there's the, the one thing about the, the, the frog skin that is so fascinating. It's the breathing part. You know, it's so thin, it's so moist. It depends very much, every frog, on having a oxygen, carbon dioxide transport through. And also a balance of electrolytes, in other words, the sodium and the potassium. And that is what's interfered with. And as a result of the fungus interfering, it has virtually cardiac arrest. And so that's how it's killing. You know, it affects the muscles, it affects the heart, and eventually it's killing the frogs. Now, knowing this will make a huge difference. You can see the temptation with the cane toad, can't you? I certainly can, but the bloody thing is immune. <laughs> um, and some big news coming up next week with the PM Science Prize. We can't say what it is, but keep watching this space on Wednesday. A fantastically interesting Australian piece of science, not least because it's basic science that people just did for curiosity reasons that led to a mega application. Well, now you're tempting us. Come on, just another clue? No, I'm not allowed. <laughs> you're not Watch allowed. the space on Wednesday, Prime Minister... Kevin Rudd will present the prize on Wednesday evening in Parliament House. Okay. And uh, your science show this week, what have you got coming up? Well, I go to see uh, what's called the Smith School of Enterprise and Environment, headed by Dave David King. You've had him on breakfast a couple of times. He used to be the chief scientist in Britain. David King is now running an outfit that is helping business deal with Copenhagen and climate change and all the turbulence we're having with the environment. It's a really interesting way of scientists meeting the boardroom. And were you, you went to Oxford for this? Certainly did. Get around, doesn't he? Robin Williams, thank you very much for joining Thanks, us. Thanks, Brian. Robin Williams. And uh, the Science Show with Robin is on at 12 o'clock this Saturday afternoon, of course, uh, here on ABC Radio National. You can also access it from the RN website. You can podcast to your heart's delight.